There have been a lot of quick Mustangs through the years, but some of the fastest ones ever are made by a man named Salim. This car is called S7. It's the fastest American production car ever built. And it's the culmination of one man's dream. That man is Steve Selene. It's been uh, very satisfying at some point in time to take a passion that one would have and turn it into a business that one could make a, a living at. To do the kind of cars that we do, I think you have to have more than a business. You need to have a, a passion and a big desire to carry it through. The S7 is a mid-engine 2,500 pound GT class race car for the street. It's the latest high performance creation from Celine Speed Lab and its credentials are impressive. This carbon fiber body was developed using today's most advanced wind tunnel techniques. The Celine design suspension uses lightweight components everywhere and the massive 15 inch front and 14 inch rear brakes are race ready. Despite the high-tech running gear, its lightweight steel space frame houses a pretty traditional engine. The block and heads are all aluminum, but the architecture is good old-fashioned Detroit-style horsepower with 427 cubic inches, two valves per cylinder, and a camshaft in the block. At 6,400 RPM, this engine is making over 600 horsepower and feeding 550 foot-pounds of torque to the 18-inch rear wheels. At wide open throttle, this car will top out at over 220 miles per hour. Now here's the good news. Steve Celine will make you an S7 of your very own for around $450,000. So can we put you down for one? Obviously, the S7 isn't an entry-level muscle car. It's a world-class racing machine with just enough street legal components to get through a DOT inspection. But the S7 is a perfect example of a Celine mindset. First, they establish a benchmark of performance. Then, they design a car that hits that mark. Finally, when off-the-shelf parts can't do the job, they build parts that can. This is a corporate attitude that comes from years of endurance racing. Endurance racing is very good if you are in the business of building production cars, which is what we are. Endurance racing and sports car racing is one of the best you can on a production base because what it does, it focuses on the weak parts of the car and allows you as a manufacturer to build a stronger car tomorrow. At nearly a half million dollars a copy, there's not much chance you'll be fighting with an S7 for a parking space at the mall. But there are plenty of people who want the same kind of white knuckles driving with a more affordable price tag. And for them, there's the Celine S281. A perfect balance of Detroit's best ideas, raised to a higher level by the high performance fanatics at Celine. The S281 is just one of a parade of Celine supercars that have re-established the Ford Mustang as one of the winningest cars on America's racetracks. And a kick in the pants street fighter. The S7, the S281, and all the other Celine cars grew out of Steve Celine's dream of building his own brand of muscle car. A dream that dates back to 1984, when Steve was a young man with a need to go fast. And Ford was a company whose performance image was in desperate need of rebuilding. We'll go there when the American muscle car returns. When the Mustang invaded the automotive scene in 1964, it had everything going for it, except muscle. But its great looks and young person appeal still sent almost a million buyers into Ford showrooms in its first two years. But almost immediately, big cubic inch competition from GM and Chrysler dragged the Mustang into a horsepower race. Never one to back down from this kind of a fight, Ford soon unleashed a string of muscle Mustangs, starting with the high-performance K-Code 289, which cranked out 271 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. 
About this same time, Steve Saline was discovering how much fun muscle cars could be. Growing up as a kid in Southern California, uh, I grew up looking at all the hot cars that were coming out, primarily from Detroit, but then looking at uh, Porsche was big, looking at Ferraris, Lotus, a lot of the imports was very exciting as well. And uh, I think that all had a big influence on my perspective of cars. While Celine was exploring all the fast cars he could get his hands on, Ford was continuing to build a Mustang into a first-class muscle car. Mustang was now packing the highest horsepower engines in Ford's stable, with everything from 390s all the way up to the mighty Cobra Jet 428. But as potent as these ground pounders were, the Mustangs that grabbed all the attention were the ones built and raced by the godfather of American sports car racing, Carroll Shelby. In the early 60s, Shelby had taken a little British sports car called the AC Bristol, replaced its four-cylinder engine with Ford's Hypo 289, and blew away the competition in U.S. road racing. He called it the Cobra. Shelby leveraged this race car building success and his relationship with Ford into another project based on that K-Code Mustang. Shelby's race package improved the car's suspension and heated up the 289 even more to make 306 horsepower. As soon as it hit the track, the Shelby GT350 immediately started cleaning up in SCCA racing. For a young man like Steve Saline, who wanted to get into racing, the Shelby Mustang was made to order. Shelby certainly had, in the, in the mid-60s there, had all the ingredients that, that really catapulted him above and beyond the rest. Driving a Shelby Mustang, Saline won the first race he ever entered. And from there, his need for speed drove him to even faster cars. In the next few years, he raced everything from Super V to Trans Am going pro in the Formula Atlantic Series, where he set 13 records and finished third in the championship. But by 1983, racing had taught Steve Saline two things. One, it cost a fortune. And two, he could build a better car than he was currently driving. So in 1984, Saline Autosport was formed. And like Carroll Shelby nearly 20 years earlier, the car he would build would be based on the Mustang. I had always had an affinity with Ford. Mustangs were close to my heart. Knowing what the base car represented and where I could take the base vehicle from a performance standpoint, decided that uh, we'll, we'll go down the road with uh, Ford here. Celine's first generation Mustang included a full aero package and his own racecraft suspension, along with a few creature comfort upgrades. At a little over $13,000, the first edition Celine sold just three cars. But a tradition had been born that year. Ultra-quick Fords from Celine, every one of them with its very own Celine sequence number. For the next two years, Celine Autosports concentrated on improving their racecraft suspension and their manufacturing operation. The car's distinctive appearance package of side stripes, Celine identification, and wide wheels and tires blended with the interior upgrades to make Celine Mustangs a cut above the showroom cars. But what really put these cars on the map was their racing success. We won the whole championship in 1987, and that really started putting us on the map. Sales topped out at 608 cars for the first four years, and this figure more than doubled in 1988. In addition to building a dearly network, Celine was now building a strong group of loyal owners. Just as Steve Celine had forecast, racing had done a number of good things for his cars. It had attracted the attention of the enthusiast community. It had built the reputation as serious muscle car builders. And racing had developed a Celine Mustang into a full-on street fighter. The formula was working. Stay with us as Celine celebrates the 25th anniversary of the Mustang in a very special way on the American muscle car. By 1989, Celine Mustangs were no longer a novelty on the streets or the racetrack. The word was out. These things went fast and they handled great. The time was right to crank it up even more with a special Celine, just in time for the Mustang's 25th birthday, the SSC. 
If the original Celine Mustangs were great cars, the SSC was a supercar. In addition to the usual Celine goodies, great handling and brakes, the aero package, and a killer stereo, this car packed more punch under the hood than any Celine car yet. The Mustang's 302 cubic inch engine was treated to a set of tubular headers, a low restriction exhaust system, and a 65 millimeter throttle body. These upgrades helped this little screamer produce 300 net horsepower. Out back, 355 gears gave it a real boost off the line. And 16-inch wheels with General 225s up front and 245s on the rear stuck it to the ground. In addition to the 160 SSCs built in 1989, Celine also created 731 regular models, which sold for considerably less than the SSC's $36,500 base price. By now, the Celine formula was well established. Cornering like it's on rails, fantastic looks, and the full-on luxury treatment inside. Celine delivered on the last part of this promise with interiors that featured flow-fit seats, a Momo steering wheel, leather upholstery with embroidered Celine logos, a full gauge package, and a full boogie stereo system. Even though Celine's 302 cubic inch engine was still very much standard issue Ford, its 6 second 0 to 60 times and its 14.5 second quarter miles were the product of improved breathing on the intake and exhaust sides. With a top speed of over 150 miles per hour, the Celine Mustangs had bridged the gap between nice American car and world class sports racer. And that's where Steve Celine had wanted to go from the beginning. He did it with a great design and good old American muscle. I always felt that the American V8 was the better choice to go with, and history, I think, has proven that to be a wiser decision. But unlike many muscle cars, the Celine's performance didn't come purely from a mega-powered engine. The difference between Celine's and ordinary Mustangs was a careful blending of individual pieces to create a car that excelled at everything. The racecraft suspension was designed to make the Mustang handle like a race car, and every piece from the special springs and Monroe shocks to the suspension bushings to its chassis stiffening components worked together to help the Celine generate some eyeball flattening cornering forces. And unlike many of today's racing models, Celine's aero package wasn't just a cosmetic feature. It all worked from the side skirts and spoilers to the front air dam and rear valance. This ground up approach toward building cars is unique to Celine and it dates back to their first days as car builders. I always focus on building the complete car. We focus on the Mustang improving it in areas that I felt we could add value added from the consumer standpoint. That was in the aerodynamics, was in the suspension, was in the interior air ergonomics. By doing a complete car, certifying it, putting a serial number on it from the, from the get-go was always our, our main focus and main objective. By the early 90s, the Fox-bodied Mustangs were getting a little long in the tooth, styling-wise. But Ford's special vehicles operations had made this little ride into a pretty mean muscle car, and Ford was selling over 200,000 of them a year at a sticker price of around $15,000. Steve Celine's ultimate Mustang was packing a $25,990 price tag. Even though the Celine was literally rolling off showroom floors and winning SCCA races, the recession of the early 90s took a big bite out of Celine's sales. Between 90 and 92, less than 400 Celines were built. But even during this time, the car continued to develop into a more amazing package. Celine celebrated their 10th anniversary in 1993, and their latest and best development, the Celine SC, rolled out with even more performance. 17 by 9 inch wheels with 45 series tires, Celine SVO four wheel disc brakes, and new racecraft struts and springs improved the car's already excellent handling. And the new two-tier rear spoiler and bold graphics told the world that this was a horse of a much different color. Under the hood, a Celine-designed intake manifold with a huge 77-millimeter airflow sensor and upgraded fuel delivery and ignition systems helped the 5-liter Mustang engine develop 304 horsepower and 
326 foot-pounds of torque. Even though times were hard, Celine's don't back down attitude still showed. Her sales literature stated, if you drive a Celine, you win. Everything else is just watching. Stay with us. We'll watch and drive the next generation of Celine Mustangs when the American Muscle Car continues. For the Celine Mustangs, it was the best of times and the worst of times. The early 90s were scary times for anyone building supercars, and Celine was no exception. Still, though, the heartbeat of competition was strong, and this resulted in some exceptional cars. Thanks to this spirit, the company emerged as a stronger, tighter organization, just in time to work its magic on another new Mustang. Once again, racing was key to the car's development. Team Celine wasn't just getting their jollies out there on the racetrack, they were building a database. And once again, Celine Mustangs were winning everything in sight. We really needed to have the pedigree, if you will, of the racing, I think, to help elevate us to, uh, to further our sales on the street side. Celine Performance, as the company was now called, was ready to unveil another special supercar. And this time, the accent was on pure muscle, the S351. In addition to the usual Celine handling and aerodynamics, the S351's Windsor crate motor finally provided enough cubic inches to make this car a bonsai street machine. But for good measure, they leaned on the 351 just a little with a specially designed roller cam, Edelbrock aluminum heads, and Ford SVO upper and lower intakes. Ceramic coated headers and a Borla exhaust system helped this engine produce over 370 horsepower at 5100 RPM and 422 foot-pounds of torque at 3500 RPM. For hardcore muscle car fans, an optional supercharger was available, which raised horsepower to 480 and made the S351 a true cruise missile. And of course, the racecraft suspension still turned in skid pad numbers that would make a Porsche driver envious. Among all the special order supercars, the Celine ranks at the very top of the touch and feel scale. And Celine's interior treatment was as posh as European cars, costing several times as much. Even with all the new power, Celine's focus stayed fixed on building the perfect car in every area of performance, from quickness to driver comfort. The S281 rolled out in 1996 as a lower priced entry into the Celine stable with exceptional bang for the buck. It's got all the Celine goodies at a price that puts it in the range of many of today's factory racers whose performance is mostly cosmetic. The Celines of the late 90s represented the highest level of performance from any Celine yet. But far from being through, they had even more exciting cars ready to roll out. And it was getting harder to tell the race cars from the street cars. In fact, that was part of the plan. Stay with us as we go racing, or cruising, or all of the above, on the American Muscle Car. Celine ended the decade of the 90s in a very different place than they were going in. From a low of just 17 cars produced during 1992, the 90s ended for Celine with four back-to-back -back SCCA Manufacturers Championships, including the FIA Championship in Spain. The Celine Allen Speed Lab Racing Team, formed with TV star and auto enthusiast Tim Allen, had raced successfully at Le Mans and had won the SCCA Drivers' Championship in 1998. Since its debut a few months earlier, the racing world had been waiting to see the S7 on the racetrack. The car performed exactly as advertised, with wins at both Sebring and Donington Park. Just like Celine promised, racing has provided solid engineering for their street cars. Development has continued on all the Celines, and for 2001, the Celine Speedsters turn it up even more. The S281 is built around the smaller 4.6 liter Ford engine. Its high revving characteristics are reminiscent of a legendary 289, which powered the early Hypo Mustangs and Shelbys. 
In a car like the S281, it's a perfect blend of lightweight and big horsepower. This engine makes over 365 horsepower, thanks to a good old hot rod speed secret, a supercharger. The big difference here is the charge from this blower goes through a Saline-designed intercooler. The S281 contains a feature that dates back to their first car, the individual serial number. This little number, always found on the left front corner of the car, is a very important part of the Saline Mustang. Salines are some of the best documented cars ever built. And as they pass from owner to owner, this number is like a pedigree, helping to trace the car's lineage. As Salines become more valuable as collector classics, being able to identify a genuine Saline takes on even more importance. Like all the Salines since the very first one, the S281 is a perfect example of why Salines are so prized by their owners and why the Saline name is so respected by high performance enthusiasts. But the Saline customer isn't Joe Everybody, which is why the company's slogan is power in the hands of a few. I think that, that Saline has mastered uh the design of the Mustang, in my opinion. Of course, I'm a little biased, I guess, but with the design, you have the performance. And I don't know, it just wraps up a muscle car. You get a little bit of everything. Debbie Blaylock has been a Mustang lover all her life. Today, she owns three Celine Mustangs and also helps coordinate Celine's owners clubs. And you cruise down the street, no matter where you go, if it's downtown, the country road, wherever, you are the baddest around. And that's what I like about it, because I like to be bad. <laughs> that pretty much says it all. Advanced technology, blended with the best of good old American go-fast, creating cars that carve up the corners and reach out and grab you with a rumble that only comes from a muscle car. What else would you expect from a kid that grew up in Southern California during the 60s? Now I have to ask you, who has more fun than I do? Let's go for a ride. Thanks for watching. And remember, don't crush it, restore it.